Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Joanna Cappell, and whether you are joining us here in person or online, it is an honor to worship with you on this blessed Easter Sunday. Welcome, and I am so glad that you are here. I do have a handful of announcements to share with the congregation this morning. First, we give thanks for different kinds of new life. This past week, um, we give thanks for the life of Caroline Chapp, who passed away this week. And we give thanks that she has been raised to new life, that the gift of Easter is true today and always. And there will be a service for Caroline next Saturday, April 6th at 11.30 a.m. here at St. Paul's. But we also give thanks for the blessing of new life. And we share congratulations with Shelby and Eli Keeker and big sister Emberlyn as they celebrate a new baby boy born into their family this week. And we say welcome to the world to Tracer Wayne. Isn't that wonderful news? Some additional announcements to share. We give thanks for everybody who has gifted a lily to our church. I always love Easter morning to see the altar all decorated and this beautiful lily cross above. So we give thanks for everybody who donated or brought a lily. And in your bulletin, you will find names and memories of those who we are remembering and honoring this day. Our altar flowers are also given by Mark and Sally Mers and family to the glory of God and in remembrance of their son Tanner. So thank you to all who gave flowers. During the month of April, you'll see in your bulletin an announcement about Dana Village. In March, St. Paul's gave some money to Dana Village, which is in Blair, Nebraska. They provide housing to youth who are aging out of foster care. It is a wonderful program. And we're continuing to support Dana Village. And during the month of April here at St. Paul's, we will be collecting small household items, hygiene items, and other things. You'll find more information in your bulletin. But everything that is given will be given to Dana Village to help furnish apartments and welcome youth and young adults into their new homes. Our liturgy for our Easter season has changed, so as we are going to worship today, take note in your bulletin, all of our music will be found in the red hymnal or uh, our curie is in the back of our bulletin. Uh, some of the music might be a little bit new, but we are going to learn together and we will announce it through the service as we go along. And finally, today we are celebrating Holy Communion, and Holy Communion will be offered by stations. So you will come forward when an usher directs you on either side of the baptismal font to receive the bread and the wine. There are baskets on the side, and then you will return to your seat by the side aisles. And Holy Communion is God's meal, and all are welcome. So please know that you are also welcome to come forward during Communion time. I believe that is all the announcements we have for this morning, so with that, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian eunuch entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At 
the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Our gathering hymn for this morning is ELW 365.
suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite you to be seated as our quiet shares of Easter lesson with us. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. 
and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite our children to come forward. Easter basket waiting to come for you. Easter is usually a pretty fun day, isn't it? But did you know that the very first Easter started out kind of sad? Yeah. Yeah. It was sad because before Easter Sunday was Good Friday. And Good Friday is the day that Jesus died. And that's sad, isn't it? Jesus died and his friends, they took him down from the cross and they laid him in the tomb, which was kind of like a cemetery, yeah. where, where they laid him to rest. And they were sad. Their friend was gone. So they felt, they felt sad. But then, on Sunday morning, which was Easter, they, some of the ladies, Mary Magdalene was one of them, she went to the tomb. And she was feeling kind of sad when she went to the tomb. She was grieving. She wanted to say goodbye to Jesus one more time. But when she got there, she was sad. But then she was scared. Does anyone have any guesses why she might have been scared? What do you think? It was an empty. It was empty. The stone had been rolled away. Jesus was gone. Her friend was gone. Where was he? She was worried about where Jesus was. Yeah? 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 So she was very worried about where Jesus was. And she even cried because she was afraid. But then, then something even more amazing happened. Mary Magdalene saw this man standing in the garden, and she wasn't sure who he was at first. But then he said her name. He said, Mary, Mary, it's me. It's Jesus. Jesus had risen from 
the dead and he was alive and now he was standing right there with her. Isn't that amazing? It's hard for us to even imagine. But how do you think Mary Magdalene felt when she saw Jesus? Happy. She had started the day sad and her sadness turned to joy because Jesus, her dearest friend and her Lord, had risen from the dead. And what good news that is. And we still get to celebrate that good news every, well, every day, but especially on Easter Sunday. We remember that Jesus rose from the dead and that Jesus did that because we are loved, each and every one of us. That Jesus loves us and gives us reason to have love and joy and hope. And that is what the message he brought to Mary Magdalene and the message for us too. And that is good, good news. So I hope you'll remember that this Easter as you celebrate and do all the fun Easter activities. So let's do a prayer together. And I like to do the repeat after me prayer. So I'll start and you guys will repeat after me. And this is for the big kids too. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for bringing us Easter joy. Thank you for bringing us Easter joy. You comforted Mary Magdalene when she was sad. You comforted Mary Magdalene when she was sad. And you brought joy into her heart. And you brought joy into her heart. And into our hearts too. And into our hearts too. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for coming up, and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, joy-filled Easter. As they return to their seats, I invite you to stand as you are able. Our gospel activation for this morning comes from our ELW number 172. saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And he said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? 
Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am, as I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had, what he had said, the things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace to you from our living and loving Father in heaven. Amen. Three days ago, Mary Magdalene and the other faithful followers of Jesus watched him breathe his last as he hung on the cross. What an awful moment that must have been to lose somebody so dearly loved and somebody that they had so much hope in. Being taken down from the cross, he was wrapped in a cloth and laid in the tomb. And his disciples went home to grieve and to figure out what might they do next. They thought that the story was finished. The chapter was closed. As hard as it would be, they would have to move on, maybe go back to their normal lives before they even knew Jesus. What else could they do? But three days have since passed, and on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. And the Gospel doesn't say exactly why she went to the tomb, though it was probably to care for the body or simply to be close to Jesus as she grieved. Like funeral services today, it was quite common for loved ones in the community to gather at the gravesite to mourn. But on that morning, Mary Magdalene was not grieving in community. She walked alone. Maybe she was going to the tomb to see it for herself, trying to come to grips to this new reality. And in the early morning light, she approaches the tomb and a deep sense of dread fills her. Something is terribly wrong. The stone has been rolled away and the tomb is wide open. She assumes that something awful has happened and she runs to get help. The disciples, meanwhile, they're likely still in hiding because they know that if they are caught or arrested that they can face the same punishment that Jesus had just faced. They were at risk for what might happen if they were found. But even so, after hearing Mary Magdalene's story, two of the disciples, Peter and the beloved unnamed disciple, they go running to the tomb to see for themselves. They look inside, and indeed the tomb is empty, except for the linen wrappings folded and set aside. They didn't know what to think. A tomb robber wouldn't usually unwrap a body, but what explanation could there be? The text tells us that the beloved disciple believed but did not yet understand. Perhaps there was a small burning in the back of his brain, a thought about, didn't Jesus say something about three days? But either way, they had no answers, and curiously, they went on home. Maybe they needed to talk it over with the other disciples, or maybe they assumed that the Romans had moved the body. They had no reason, though, to believe that he was alive. So now Mary Magdalene sits outside the tomb by herself, and she cries. I can only imagine what she was thinking. First, Jesus had died, and that was painful enough. But now his body is missing. She couldn't properly say goodbye or have closure knowing that he was missing. She was probably feeling overwhelmed, sad, scared, angry. But what could she do? She looks inside the tomb once more, and at this time, she sees two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been. 
Now, if I was Mary Magdalene, I would have assumed that I was going insane, but she doesn't even seem phased that these angels are here. But she asks them where, if they know where the body is. My, my Lord is missing. And then she turns to see another man approaching in the distance, but she doesn't recognize who he is. The approaching man speaks to her and says, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? The voice sounds familiar. And has she seen those eyes before? It's almost as if she knows this man. But no, her, her brain must be making things up. It couldn't possibly be who she's thinking. Assuming the man to be a gardener, Mary asks him where Jesus has been laid. And now the text doesn't tell us the tone in which Jesus spoke to Mary in response. But when I imagine this moment, I see Jesus looking at her with gentle eyes and a kind smile. Mary is the first person that Jesus has likely seen since the resurrection. Jesus can see and feel the trauma that she has gone through and the grief that she is experiencing. I wonder if Jesus chose to appear to Mary Magdalene first, knowing that she needed him. But he speaks to her softly, Mary. It's as if he is saying, I'm here. The worst part is over. I didn't leave you forever. Mary looks at this man again, and this time she knows it's Jesus. I imagine Mary running to Jesus and throwing her arms around him, and just imagine that hug. Someone you love dearly and have hoped in has returned, and you thought you would never see him again. It's him, what joy! It doesn't make sense at this moment, but that doesn't matter because I can see him. It's Jesus, he lives. I can only imagine the shock, the joy, all of the feelings mixed together, the tears of grief now into amazement and joy. Jesus is risen. If I was Mary Magdalene, I wouldn't want to let him go. But Jesus knew that he couldn't stay, because soon it would be time for him to ascend to heaven, and there were things that he needed to do. But Mary, beloved and faithful Mary, had needed him first, so there he was. And now it would be Mary who would share the good news with the others. I can hear Jesus saying, go in peace, Mary. There is reason to have hope. Go and tell the others the good news. The Gospel doesn't tell us what Mary did as after she told the disciples of the risen Christ, but I imagine that she went away from that encounter completely transformed. From mourning into joy, Christ was risen. The risen Christ had reached out to her personally and called her by name. She had encountered the promises of the resurrection, and she knew that they were true. I imagine she spent the rest of her life telling others of this momentous event to anyone who would listen. Well, on this Easter morning, brothers and sisters, we are touched by the same resurrection and these same resurrection promises of hope. Christ was crucified, died, and was buried. And he did this out of love for Mary Magdalene and for the disciples, for the world, and for you personally. Christ died and rose again because you are dearly loved. So loved, in fact, that Jesus wasn't about to let sin and death have the last word over you. Because of Christ, we have reason to hope, and we have a future and a relationship with God. And just as Jesus reached out to Mary Magdalene, so too does Christ reach out to each one of us. The risen Christ is found in the daily moments of life, in the sunshine and in the rain, in the days where everything seems to go right and even on the days when we don't, in the silence and in the noise, in the joy and in the sadness. Through the resurrection, there is nowhere that Christ can't reach us 
and that gives me reason to hope. Jesus is calling to each one of us, calling you personally by name, saying, I see you, I love you, and I am here. Now may we go forth in peace, transformed in hope of the resurrection, and may we tell the world of all that we have encountered this day. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Thine is the Glory, comes from ELW number 376. Who proceeds 
for the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is in worship and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of the news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protected. Where the church is privileged, granted humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. We especially remember and pray this morning for Stetson, Kathy, Mona, Samantha, Carol, Katie and her family, Bob, Robert, Austin, Helen, Steve, Della, Charlie, Marty, Randy, Kathy, Corey, Marie, and Tom. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to take a moment to share a sign of peace with those around you.
Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Our communion liturgy for this morning can be found beginning on page 190 of your hymnal that's in the front part, the smaller numbers for the bottom. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all circumstances give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn from EOW 3.